Okay, this is part 18 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. So in the previous lesson we looked at dictionaries, so in this lesson we'll start off by just making a very, very quick review of dictionaries. And remember I had talked about something about, you know, like your French or Spanish dictionary. So in this case what I did, I created um, two dictionaries, one just called French phrases, and I have this one phrase that I'm defining. I went to the store and I have it in here like this as je suis allé au magasin you got to pardon my French there and then uh, in Spanish I went to the store yo fui a la tienda okay so but so these are the same except the dictionary name is differently because the same thing if you look in a regular dictionary of a foreign language it's going to be different but if you access in English so we're going to try and print this print French phrases and in single quotes I went to the store and versus print Spanish phrases I went to the store okay so let's try and run this and see what happens I actually I ran it before and I goofed up I forgot quotation marks around my uh, uh, my string I right, said so let's see what happens print then run it run it run the script so there, when I run the script, there it is. Well, those are the numbers from there. And je suis allé au magasin, and je fui à la tienda. So this is a really cool use for it because I like to use things like this, and um, it's a great way to. Be, that's why, it, for me, that's why it's more of a dictionary than this feels like a dictionary. But there are math dictionaries out there. But that's really what it is. You're associating it. It's the set of values associated with this, like this. All right, and then you could add another phrase over here, you know, uh, you know, like I don't know. We went to the store, New Sam's Aleo Magazine, and we went to the store, Fuimos a la Tienda, and then you would put those in there, and so we could just do that. Look at just shoot, man. Let's just grab this little piece right here, and do this, and we'll just separate it with a comma, and press V, and is we'll say we went to the store. And if I remember this, is I don't know if I remember this. Nous sommes allés au magasin. And this one we'll pick up here. Like this. And this is also going to be we went to the store. And we'll just put this, we'll get rid of the nosotros. We'll just use fuimos. Fuimos a la tienda, like that. All right, so, and then we'll take these guys, and out of that, we'll print, we went to the store. Okay, and then we'll run that script. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so, je suis allé au magasin, je fui à la tienda, nous sommes allés au magasin, et fuimos a la tienda. Okay, we got it. So, um, that should help solidify dictionaries in your mind, I hope right because we'll be using them a lot and um, so now let's get to the lesson and what are we going to do today let me see I had something in mind oh, what was it no oh, I've lost track of what were we going to do cool in this lesson I oh, was going to put something in the dictionary uh, oh no there was something in specific I wanted to go over real quick like that oh yeah I know what it was it was up in here so um, then normally what I would do, once I have things defined like that in separate dictionaries, forms, or separate variables, I'll usually make a separate method or a routine, and then what I'll do is I'll come into here and the variables, like that. And then within here, I'll init var variables, and then I'll make a routine that, you know, just runs through those initializations. And it may be nothing more than calling a method within another, I mean, another method somewhere, or a function within another method. In fact, well, we could do that. Let's try that. Let's just do this. Let's take this file one, and we'll just copy this stuff right here, like this, right? And I'll call this, get a new module, and I'll call it French phrases. No, I'll, we'll just call it language phrases, because since we have both in here. Like this, I'm going to paste this into here, but of course we don't need the math right here. We need these, so we have these in here. So now I have these in here called language phrases, but let's put this within a definition like this. And def 
language phrases. I can call it the same as the module, I think. Yes, def language phrases like this, right? And then down here, oh, that's not going to work unless we do this now, of course. Oh, that's part of that. Don't need to indent that and that, and that, and that, and that. And then down at the bottom, we'll actually call language phrases like this. All right, so we have, let's save that just for a second. So those are our phrases, oh, phrases like that. Then we'll go back into main, fountain design like this and init variables. But instead of init variables, we'll try and import, I should turn that back into lowercase, import language phrases. And then I was trying to keep these separate, so but I don't know if I'll do it with caps or not. And so it'd be the language phrases dot <laughs> language phrases like that. So it should actually run it. And let's put some space down here so we see. Oh, that's not going to work like that. Okay, so we we'll run that. Let's see what happens when we run this script here like this did something, didn't print it, didn't, so it initialized language phrases dot language phrases, should have run it, right? Oh, error in the script. Line 5 module, no module named language phrases. What? You must be kidding me. Language phrases. Okay, this might be that error where I said before, sometimes you run into this problem where like this, you have to ed enter in a pi extension, or it's going to be that lower case issue so let's go try it again in here and run it I don't seem to have gotten an error that time let's see they put all the fountains in the scene and there was a so there was the no module there was the error and so there it is um, it did it twice right I guess I must have clicked that twice let's do it again let's run it again and see what happens location well it's putting it in there okay so that gives you an idea so really so basically I've initialized things from another module and then I don't have then I don't have to initialize things within say a particular uh, routine like this I can get rid of that when I'm using it but as I'm doing so sometimes I actually prefer just using a local variable like that because it's cleaner to read because if I was to use this same you know routine so it's a lot of extra typing and when I look at it it's actually a lot less clean to look at so it's kind of a preference I actually like you know local variables because for that very reason but it just depends on the situation all right all right well that's it for this lesson and I, yeah next lesson we'll start getting back to the fun stuff all right we'll see you then